Hey guys, and welcome back to another episode of the More Than Muscle podcast. I am your host, Matt Cooney, and this is episode five. And today I have the pleasure of being joined by Mr. Kirk Miller. Kirk, how are you? Very good, my friend. How are you? Good. Thanks for joining me. Um, so for, for any, anyone that doesn't know Kirk, he is a fitness model, personal trainer, and online coach for the last many years and has helped hundreds of men transform their body and one thing you probably for anybody that don't know Kirk, you may have seen him before um, <laughs> he is as i said he's a fitness model he has we may as well get this out of the way first Kirk. He's, he's been on the front cover of men's health more than any other human on the planet is that i believe that's correct yeah the, yeah nearly right so we got um I'm a men's health club model winner. That ultimately changed my life. But um, men's fitness is the one that I broke the record. I've had a couple of men's health, but men's fitness is the one where they, they gave me the accolade last year, which I was very grateful for. Yeah. <laughs> so again, think with, with that in mind, it could be very easy to, uh, for listeners to think that everything that was, has been easy for you. But um, I know it, wasn't, it obviously wasn't a thing where you woke up one morning and was like, yeah, I'm just going to go on the cover of men's health. Uh, this morning. So even if you just give a bit of a uh, background into your story of how you got to where you are today. Yeah, I'll, I'll try and keep this brief. I can <laughs> ramble on about this. But no, in short, my, my original dream was, I think everyone, when they're a young age, you have this dream of what they want to be. Uh, mine was, like a lot of guys, to be a professional footballer. That was, I was, I was obsessed. Um, and I was very fortunate enough to uh, sign as a young professional at Coventry City. And then at the end of the age of 19, 20, uh, got told I wasn't good enough. I was like, wasn't going to get another contract. And that was the first time looking back, Matt, that I was actually told you are not good enough. You know, like a lot of guys uh, used to play football, especially when you're in that professional environment, you generally speaking, you're the, you're, the, you're the best player, the captain of all teams, and you're the sporting hero at school and all that stuff. And you're the best of the bunch. And then when you're into this professional market, all of a sudden it's a level playing field and, Looking back then, when I got knocked back, um, when you have this sole aspiration of, right, that's what I'm going to be, and then it's took away from me in the space of 10 seconds, you know, without the, the emotional development I have now, it, it hit me for six without realizing it, even though you put on a brave face. So after that, I then didn't know what to do. Um, even though fitness was blatantly my passion, <laughs> clearly, um, it was as if, it, 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 you know, I'd lost something that day, you know, when that happened and it was too obvious to then go and forge a career as a trainer and all that stuff. So for, I retrained as a gas engineer, believe it or not, a plumber, uh, and continued to do that for like five, six, seven years, somehow stumbled away for a gas um, qualification. Yeah. But I obviously still trained during that time, um, but I did that for five, six years. I was lost, um, no direction, um, you know, living for the weekend, um, you know, drink, drugs you name it at the weekend it was you know and then I'd train hard and all that stuff during the week and then in at the age of 26 uh, I got sort of pushed to do oh why don't you enter this men's health competition and um, by a friend I sent some pictures off and she actually wrote the write-up for me I was that lost and sort of demotivated at the time if that makes sense um, and that purpose and um, I actually made the men's health final but um, I, I, I missed the phone call so I called, I called them back and said I'm you know going to be you know I'm calling up because I made the men's health final they said you did but unfortunately you rang back too late and um we had to give you place to someone else and there, and obviously I was devastated you know ironically I missed the phone call because I was fitting a toilet in the job I didn't like <laughs> but um <clears throat> I mean ironically uh it, I just believe at that point I, I truly believe that the, the universe rewards when you're doing the right things and I was doing too many of the wrong things in other aspect areas of my life irrelevant the six pack at the time and then a year later um same friend who I owe a lot, very a lot to. I've told this story a lot. Sonia, she um, she told me to do the competition again, and I didn't believe that thousands of people would be picked again. I was like, "Ain't gonna pick me again." Um, but but again, through her pushing me, I entered some pictures. I think this time maybe I did it myself. I can't remember. Um, and then yeah, very very long story short, I was very very fortunate enough to win that competition. And then the biggest thing that aside from the superficial aspect of me seeing me on the cover, which was surreal. It, the penny dropped that you know follow your passion but but more importantly that it it was it was during that last year and we'll explain why i believe things changed 
uh, that I truly started to believe in myself because I think without realizing it, the knockback from Coventry City, you know, where you, you know, you think you're going to be achieving something, you're going to be a footballer, and then, you know, then then it's took away from you. Um, you, you you stop to believe you stop believing in yourself a little bit, you know, and then you think, oh, how will I fail once, and they're not going to pick me from just from Coventry, who went you know, God from Coventry, ain't going to be on the cover and all that stuff, and but the penny dropped, and it was just there was a definite shift then, but um, and then yeah, within six, seven, eight months, I retrained as a trainer and you know, quit my job and, and just just went for it, man. I was that unhappy with doing what I was doing, I I just I I just thought fuck it, and and I I needed to go all in, you know, yeah. I think that's just cool that like even like you're saying that penny dropped where it was just I think it was like that mindset shift where you realize from I suppose like that being devastated for so long and then being lost and then yes. again it's it's kind of like nearly having to find find yourself again but I think one yeah. one thing that I want to touch on that it's it's a, it's already coming through is this passion that you have because I I know from speaking to you previously even just how much passion and energy you have for what what we do um was yeah. that like that was that something you always had or did you yeah i think I, yeah i mean i, I you know I, I believe you know massively into personal development like yourself and and you know i believe there's certain incidents in your younger life that shape the way you think and feel um but i've always been like like relentless high energy and i love moving around and you know yeah if i look about even if i look at what i was what i'm doing now you know when you're coaching you're interacting you're, you're sort of lifting people up and leading you know i was the guy at school i was always captain i was just doing the same thing but in a different path and the reality was when i then had that knockback and then then in a, a five six year span where i'm doing something that doesn't fulfill me and then you're doing you're getting controlled by your condition you're letting life control you rather than you control your life um it sort of dampens and doesn't align with your true identity. And I think one of the key things that, that I believe is important in life is to really understand, you know, what is your highest values? What is your purpose? What you're, what, what, what you're on this earth to do? And then find a career path um, that allows you to, to, to do that, to impact, give, serve, and ultimately at the same time, you're going to be fulfilled and maintain energy, energy yourself. I think if you're consistently lacking energy, for me, it tells you, one, you're in the wrong job, two, you're around the wrong people, and three, your perception of how life should be to what you're actually doing on a daily basis aren't aligned. Because generally speaking, I think that where we feel disempowered and lack motivation, all that stuff is when, where we believe something should be a certain way. And it could be, for example, you know, when people think they should look a certain way, like, you know, two stone lighter, feeling good about themselves. If their daily conditions and the way they're living aren't matching up to that, they're going to constantly feel bad and i think during that five six year period you know when i was doing a, a, a plumber i know as a kid when you've got aspirations to be the next manchester united footballer yeah but you then fit that where i'm doing that plumbing job that wasn't what i signed up for in life do you know what i mean i think <laughs> a lot of people's i know it sounds quite deep but a lot of people's unhappiness come from not actually doing and focusing on the things that align with their, their values and what they truly love to do you know yeah that's 100 i'm actually that's very much the same as me, like four or five years before I got back into the fitness industry doing PT. Again, I was doing working on a building site and I was just lost like that as well. Yeah. And it was like, again, something for me, something kind of bad had to happen for me to actually that penny to drop. Yeah. You realize like, oh, like, what do I not, it's not me. I, I'm not, it's not what was meant to happen for me. Um, and again, yeah. it's like, I always knew that I, I wasn't in the right place. You know, when you just don't have that constant, you don't have that energy, that mindset, the environment. You, like I knew I was like, I'm out, I'm not in the right place, but I, I just never, like that you get stuck for years. I just never yeah. kind of got out of it myself. And it wasn't until something happened that I'm like, yeah, that's it. And I think that's for you, even that's that passion that you had as that footballer came back then, that spark. Yeah. Yeah, I, I 100% agree, mate, because, I mean, I've, I've worked with, obviously, some you know, fantastic life coach, and, and I've been to personal development seminars and all this stuff, and the reality was, when, when I was breaking down my, my story, and she was looking at my body language of what lit me up when I'm explaining, you know, what, what moments in my life really did I feel empowered, it was ironic. She actually watched me, my body language, stand up and raise my arms as I'm talking about, you know, where, you know, you're in a 
football final, you know, my knees are sore and the, the team needs you. I'm struggling with injury, but somehow you mustered up the willpower and the, the drive to score two goals, win it. And it wasn't about the personal accolade of scoring the goals to win. It was more when some, someone truly needs you and you just show them, even against adversity, that anything's possible. And it might sound quite deep, but that's why now as a coach, and I know you're the same, that, you know, it's, it's just showing people that no matter where you are, you know, that, that anything is possible, irrelevant of setbacks and knockbacks. It's just how you look at things. And the, the thing is, Matt, you're, we're not sitting here now. And obviously, what's ironic, that's a really similar story. The building site stuff is not, you're not trying to say you've had all, you know, your, your shit figured out, you know, yet sometimes you had to go for that period. I had to go for that period to probably truly appreciate what we're doing now. And that's where you're like me. I know we joke about it. You don't really care how many hours you have to do, or you just, you sort of can't wait out to get, to get out of bed, you know, to do the tasks, you know? And I know when I was doing plumbing, that was absolutely not the case. I was clock watching. I even got, what's ironic, mate? You know, we look for those moments where it's just, you get those moments where it's just, you set yourself enough. You have these signs from the universe. And for me, I was, I remember before I quit my job, I was literally getting, caught on the phone you know I was just skiving on jobs and and I was getting warnings and I just think and I probably it was like the form of self-sabotage deliberately knowing that I needed to go to the lowest point to then go right let's go for it you know yeah and I think that's something that going through that period has obviously really helped you now as a coach to relate to people because you work with um like a lot of successful businessmen um and then you essentially help them with their their bodies, you know. And something you you mentioned uh, when we were talking before that I thought was really interesting was kind of like, would a lot of your clients would come to you with this kind of lack of self belief and how you install that in them? Um, is, is there even just explaining kind of the common things you see with the clients that you work with when it comes to kind of self belief and how you go about changing that for people? Yeah, I think the first thing is, you know, when people are lacking like self-belief or overly stressed and, uh, you know, they're, they're stuck in a rut, often, you know, they're, they're overwhelmed, they're lacking motivation, but it, it just comes from one thing to try and like do very quickly with a client such as that who built a massive business and they're very successful. Look, they've, they've got the mindset, they've got the skill, they've got the skill set. I, I always say they would never have been able to build a successful business if they weren't deep down in their true nature, some aspect of discipline or organize, you know, and have a drive to help and serve in their own businesses. Cause ultimately if they're world-class business owners, they're doing, if you're a world-class business owner, you generally have a product or a service, which is serving people on a larger scale. Right. And the reality is because they have that skill set, and what, what got them to that success is plan structure bit by bit layering their, their companies or whatever their service is. And it's no different. First of all, you know, in the same way they did when they're at the business, right? What, where did you start? Where did you want to go? And what were the simple daily steps? And, and that's where, you know, straight away when someone's coming to, you know, to lose weight and they want to feel better and protect their health, you know, that where do they want to go? And then you work, where are you currently now? And how can we just simplify the structure and, and give you some direction um, and just start small? I think too many times the reason people quit lack motivation is they say these big massive outcome go, goals of losing. 10 pound or like even more perhaps but they don't focus on the smaller wins to actually get momentum but i think one of the key things they're all crying out for is just structure and guidance and 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 you know uh, a bit of straight talking that tends to work yeah that's yeah i couldn't agree more um because yeah like when you think of it even like i always like to uh relate things back to like growing a business is essentially like you know, your phone, your it, it's the same principles so you know you have repetition so you need to yeah, put in yeah. the reps you have frequency, you need to be consistently showing up, you need to work hard, and you need rest and recovery. So we all know yeah. that in the gym, you need to rest and recover. In your business, we can all attest if you're working 16 hours a day, seven days a week, you will burn out. Yes. So yeah, it's, it's, it's the same principles that apply to body composition is in business, you know? So it's, yeah. and I think like that for you, getting people to be aware of that, like, so it's, it's like you already have those core principles, you just need to direct them in the right place and that's like you said that structure and guidance can you know you're yeah. not trying to teach them you're just trying to guide them because they have it already yeah because yeah, I, I, I feel me i mean i think one of my strengths and you're probably the same one of my strengths is i'm really like specific with a way i program people's workouts and all that stuff but the reality is and i know we amplify education of certain food groups and what's good and what isn't ultimately a lot of people generally know what they should and shouldn't be eating but it's 
they lack a self-awareness of why they overeat, why they binge, why they, and the reality is, especially with my demographic, stressed business owners, the real, most people tend to overeat, sabotage their health and fitness through stress, boredom, tired, or they've got, they're simply got a habit. They can't identify, you know, why it's happening. And one thing I've found fascinating that, um, cause I know I've got my own sort of thing, you know, the Kirky Sunday special with a roast yeah. dinner. A lot of the time we have certain eating patterns based on what we've done for 20, 30 years growing up. Think about it. Mm. Like one of my things that, you know, obviously was a, as a connection, it's one of the human needs is connection on a Sunday, I had roast dinner with my mum and dad. And that was obviously a way of the family connecting and you know, love. And the reality is, and even on when I used to have like excessive takeaways, you know, in my younger days, in my early twenties, that was just purely habit because that's what we did as a family. You know, my dad would have match of the day, would have a Chinese or whatever it is. And, mm. But you, you don't know. You can't break a pattern to form a new habit if you actually don't know what you're doing in the first place. You're going to be on autopilot, right? So one, some of my best ever transformations, Matt, have been, you know, I've not, they've been gobsmacked. One of my guys, a guy called Aaron Emery, he did probably the best transformation I've ever seen. You know, that, and with him, he was eating like takeaways on a Saturday, on a Friday, you know, kebab with cheesy chips and everything. And, he was gobsmacked when the first thing I did was when I saw, saw what was going on, I, I could tell one, I didn't believe he was fulfilled in his job, which was quite a ballsy thing for me to say, but about a month in, I said, hey, do you enjoy what you're doing? Ironically now he's retraining to be a personal trainer. And all of a sudden he's like, because he was just on the, in the same way I was lost within my career path. So was he, but it was habit. He was, it was sheer boredom on a Friday, Saturday and Sunday night, you know, he was just going to complete shit. So what I did is, Little basic things, you know, still have your kebab and chips to start with, but don't have, don't have cheese, don't have mayonnaise, straight with your calorie reduction. So it's just, it's getting people self-aware of why they're doing what they're doing, because otherwise, and I know we think similar on this, you just giving someone a diet plan who's never healthy in their life, go and eat this. Yeah, it's like a rent a body, rent, rent a body attitude, and, a, and it's just a temporary fix, you know, especially like drinkers, for example. I've got a guy at the minute, he drinks seven days a week, you know, so... I've said we've just set a target like two days a week don't drink and we've just improved his eating habits that's still going to help him gain momentum we're in all of a sudden have to re ramp something which he's been doing for 35 years it's just not does that make sense you know yeah 100 percent. and that's even like what you were saying about the eating habits that we have for years like I guarantee everyone that listens to this as soon as you mention like something that we've been doing for 20 years everybody has that because i can even remember my yes. dinners growing up and I'm like, I, even now I'm like, oh my God, I'm, when I see like baby stuff, I'm like, I'm going to have every, every day for like my whole teens, you know? So it is funny that we build up these habits. Um, and that's something even just to move on, like some, one of our biggest interests, common interests is habits and habit change. Yes. And I think that's, that's, why, that's why we've kind of um, connected so well. It's just the, the love of yes. habits. And like you mentioned, it's starting small. And I think sometimes it's, it's so small that you nearly would be blind. Like you said, self-aware, you'd be blind to it because it's just like, just don't have one beer, one beer, you know? And it's like, why would you do that? It's still going to have 10, but it's still less than 11, you know? And yes. that doesn't seem like anything, but in six months, you're not having any beer, you know? Um, yes. that's, yeah, I, I think for habits, that's what way kind of do you go about with people? Like you were saying, you can kind of, do you kind of just have a look at the overall lifestyle? You can spot straight away. These are the habits that they need to change. Or sorry, mate, the signal work a little bit. Say that again. Oh, sorry. Yeah, I was sorry. Saying if when it comes to habit change, do, do you kind of just look at the client's lifestyle and then you're able to identify certain habit key habits? Yes. Yeah. 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 Hundred percent. I look at the lifestyle. Um, making. I need to see what's going on with their their food, how they live, and how much they sleep, and all that stuff. Um, but and it, I suppose it depends as well, mate. How damaging a particular habit is like you know if someone was an extreme alcoholic i think it's very important to stay in your lane if someone is that you know um damaged but in terms of like most people with habits it's literally identified right what is the biggest culprit which is affecting the outcome which they desire whether their physique or their health what is the one primary habit deep down that is the issue that because often you, you notice a spiral effect that when you when you improve someone's biggest achilles heel slowly but surely would you agree that for example someone who's a big drinker and we certainly just drop their drinking a bit the knock-on effect is the days the evenings for example jazz is drinking he's going to eat better the next day so without me even mentioning about his food he's going to consciously be 
eating better because he's not hungover or he's, you know, he's not craving salt and sugar a little bit. So I think the key thing is identifying like who, what's their biggest habit could be sugar. Like one of my guys, for example, he's for 25, 30 years, obviously he's a property developer and he's had seven cups of tea with two sugars in at the minute. We've gotten down to three cups of tea with one sugar in that's a huge win, you know? Um, but that was his thing. It wasn't booze. It wasn't. So everyone's different. There's no, I think it's right. What's your biggest habit, a big, big, the most damaging habit that you wish to change. And the key is this, they have to be willing to change. I've never taken a client on who was willing, you know, because I'm sure you're the same. Like if someone could say to me, I want to do this and do that, but deep down you need to be, I really committed to change. And I think sometimes when people aren't committed to change, they're too busy focusing on themselves and they're not realizing the potential impact on those around them or they're not thinking of the consequences that that may affect in a later life. You know, if people are prepared to just self-sabotage year after year, you know? Yeah. I think too that's short-sighted is, what they think. Yeah. And even what, what tends to happen with people is they try to completely overhaul everything. So it's like, like mm-hmm. you were saying, you, you look for that one habit and often it's only all you need is that one that leads to the next. Whereas if you go and find like that, take someone that's seven nights a week and you give them this bland meal plan with no drinking and now, so not, not yeah. only that, but now they don't even know what to do with their, you know, their, their Friday, Saturday, Sunday. Yeah. It's not even not drinking. It's like, what, what do I do with my life? You know? <laughs> Whereas yeah. if you slowly change it, the lifestyle catches up, if that makes sense. Yeah. And, and I think some, sometimes like, it's not even like, to do with training or food. Like, I know for me, because we've all got to sleep. Like, honestly, for me, I, the, the, the one thing that's been self-sabotage already is when fucking sleep. Whereas, you know, you know, I'm still refining it. I'm not perfect now, but I know when I'm, that's my thing. I sleep better. You think better. You eat better. You move better. You make better decisions. You forget less. You know, it's, 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 and that, that got picked apart, you know, a few years ago with my, the life coach lady, I worked with, she went, it was literally, she did like a chart and all the aspects, it's like a circle of life. And then yeah. there's me thinking other things were the problem, say like being organized or the, that wasn't the problem. It was the reason I was chasing my tech was because you, you're forgetting the, you know, it's, it's, yeah. everyone's got their thing. Yeah, I think sleep is a massive one as well. That's uh, underrated. And I think everybody like that has g- gone through that stage of not appreciating sleep or not knowing, mm-hmm. whether it's like, even for you, like you were saying, you were probably even then in really, like really good shape, training all the time, eating well, but just weren't. It was the completely wrong, just, it was the wrong way. You know what I mean? Yeah, but that, what happened was, Matt, I was relying on, you know, pre-workouts and, stupid amounts of caffeine you know to get through because you're like you know even though obviously i love training hard and intense it was sort of like you know if you you know sleeping for week you know you sleep when you're dead and no matter what you know training like, even if you're on three hours sleep that's deluded anyone who preaches that is just deluded in my opinion huh? yeah yeah no that's I, i'm 100 percent agree um and it's something that's what a lot of people will do nowadays like you see people that will have coffee can of monster at like eight nine o'clock at night and then go, going into the gym and then it's like trying to sleep after that stuff you know um and then just trying to live again i think what happens is you become completely unaware um because when you're sleep deprived you don't know it but then you start reaching for coffee more you start eating snacking more you don't mm-hmm. know you're doing these things like mm-hmm. that it's yeah. just habits and then yeah. and then all I, of I, a sudden, I, I, like, wow. yep. yeah no i agree i think what it is as well whether it's you you lose control of your decisions and your emotional state and your focus. Cause you know, if you can maintain focus of where you're trying to go, it's easier to stay along with the thing to get there. But if you actually don't know what's losing your focus every day, you know, then it's a, it's a you know, it, it, it's hard to fix. So I really do think it's that important. Yeah. Uh, perfect. I, I know I'm conscious of your time, Kurt, because I know you have... No, I'm, uh, I'm good. I'm good. I'm, I'm actually good. I'm, I'm good. He's, yeah, it's, it's good. Yeah, it's good. To, we've had to move stuff around. It's fine. Oh, you sure? You sure? Yes, <laughs> it's all good. Um, yeah, so the last thing I wanted to touch on and was just kind of for you, I know as well, like you were saying, you had a period of time where you felt like you were lost. Um, there was also like you've had some setbacks in your career because I think for you, it's very easy to look at like, oh, like see you on the cover of, of magazines and think, Jeez, that must have been um you know like mm-hmm. easy for you to get yeah, there nothing goes wrong nothing goes wrong yeah you, yeah. yeah but i know yeah. like i know i remember you put up posts like you've had definitely quite a few setbacks um and comebacks i think from that so even if you could just talk about like one or two <laughs> yeah <laughs> no no yeah there, there, there's been a there's been a few but what's ironic is every single one of these like setbacks 
they shape my character and ultimately they did they, they, they've served the purpose they've added to your story and they've made me a better coach you know a better person but um obviously the the, the big one was obviously the not back from football you know but and then obviously if I think of the pre football moments, there was a knockback from football. Um, but that strengthened my character and deep down it taught me to deal with rejection, you know. Um, and then um I obviously had the the big like knockback, you know, from thinking you were gonna be entering a competition with yeah. men's health and then getting told your place is given, whatever. And then um the rupture, the the bo- the, the, the 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 bicep rupture, you know. Mm. Um it was, uh, I, I, I tore my bicep off the bone 18 months ago. Yeah. And that was, I was doing a charity boxing fight, um, training for that. And then um, I literally tore my bicep off the bone in sparring. And in that moment, Matt, like, it wasn't just the fact of, am I going to be able to do a boxing fight? It was my career, <laughs> literally. Yeah. Like, my, my bicep's halfway up my arm. And, um, but it was seven weeks before the fight. I didn't want to pull out of the fight. And it was more so I didn't want to let people down. And I mean, the, the surgeon was telling me in 30 years, he'd never had anyone who, um, you know, who, who'd fought a fight with a full-on bicep rupture. But it was just one of those things. I just, I wanted to, in the same way people come to me because they're stuck and they're, they're in a tough place in their life and they want to achieve a certain outcome. I just wanted to literally lead by example and show you that no matter when you have, when you do not negotiate with your mind, on what your outcome is, which mine was to make that fight no matter what. When you, all you focus on is that, it's amazing what your brain does when you just channel your mind to see nothing but that there's a desired outcome. So I ignored the advice of the specialists and I just work with other specialists to try and do what I can do. And um, yeah, I literally did the best I could, you know. Um, and yeah, thankfully I made the fight, but that was definitely one of the most. Um, m- mindset strengthening things that's ever happened to me you know because i it i ended up rehabilitating it makes you train smarter recover smarter um and also from the mindset stuff it just helped me helps me get people who are stuck you know into a better place yeah and even from that like the last 12 months you are back in uh you're full back you're full training for the last mile now yeah yeah literally i am um i was able to get a yeah i've got another front cover um yeah, able to come back in shape but yeah definitely done it a smarter way you know yeah and how did you find that coming back from obviously a bicep rupture is fairly um it was very challenging mate for six seven months i i couldn't couldn't train so you 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 really happen to dig deep emotionally and, and try and be grateful for the situation what's it teaching you and how can i come back quicker um well smarter but um it, it just taught me to be patient in the same way I've been a naturally a very patient person. Normally, if I want something, I want to get there as quickly as I can. Yeah. But in the same way, clients are coming to me wanting a result. Now I can truly understand and and coach them on the importance of patience and doing things properly. And you know, I guarantee, like you know, clients will have more longevity, which ties in with my program, which is built to last. You know, it's, I want people to have not just a short term result, but long term. Yeah, that's. A hundred percent. And it's really like good to see even all the lessons and things that you've went through along the along your journey have all kind of sh- like you said, shaped you to where you are today and I think have made you stronger, better coach and better able, I suppose, to communicate with people, you know, because you've been you've essentially been through all these situations that you can relate to all all your clients, you know. Yeah. Hundred percent. That's a hundred percent. Um, so to, just to finish up, if people want to know more about you, Kirk, where is the best way, what's the best way to contact you or where can they find you? Uh, yeah, obviously my, my Instagram handle is Kirk Miller under, underscore. And then the, uh, my web, web my, the website is www.kirkmiller.co.uk. Um, but yeah, any of them channels are fine. And, um, yeah, if anyone wants to connect with me in any way, then that's great. And I know if they're, they're a fan of your stuff then all i'll say from my side even as you as a coach that you know we one of the reason we connected the way we do is both come from struggles but one thing we're both obsessed about is is doing things the right way um and pr- protecting and serving clients long term not just the quick fix which i see so often these days yeah 
100%. Um, and what I'll do is I'll, I'll leave those links in the show notes anyway. Um, no worries. So thanks, thanks a million again for your time and really appreciated you sharing all that as well. I definitely think there's loads of value for people. Um, and if you guys haven't, haven't subscribed already, please subscribe. If you did find some value in today's episode, please drop me a message or a comment and we will see you in the next one. Thanks guys.